Link 2012. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Link 2012, and I'm here to do a review of Burnout Fantasy. Um, I believe this is Untold Stories number eight. This review is primarily meant uh, for developers, because I know uh, I, I really look forward to playing more Untold Stories maps, and I want to kind of offer my feedback. But I also obviously um, am designing this somewhat for those that want to play the map. If those that want to play the map, fantastic map. It is uh, a little bit above average as far as Untold Stories goes in terms of quality and Untold Story Stories typically has pretty high quality maps. So definitely would recommend you play this map. I believe it's fairly new too. I actually played this map on my laptop. So I am currently recording this on my normal computer. I just played it towards the end of the summer. I So if some of the settings are messed up here. I do apologize for it. Burnout Fantasy is a little bit different than most CTMs uh, for a couple of reasons. It has some interesting gimmicks. Um, the, now, there's typical stuff. You have, I believe it's, well, you can see right behind me right here. It's 6 plus 6 is 12 monument items, 27 bonus emeralds. The custom mechanics in the map. There's not too many custom mobs. However, the main custom mechanic is the difficulty mechanic, which is that if you die, you lose all of your stuff. So that's kind of difficulty number one. Uh, other interesting gimmick is that this all takes place in the nether. So as a result, you can't use water buckets in order to farm, for instance. And we'll kind of get into that um, a little bit later on. Uh, I do recommend to go the completionist route on this map as well. I'm going to be making a guide for some of the trickier emeralds. Don't feel ashamed if you need to look up some of the emeralds in this map because they're just absurdly difficult. Uh, I believe I needed to do some extra measures in order to find one or two of them. But besides that, all of them were pretty reasonable in this map. Um, honestly, I, I feel like this map is pretty good with the emeralds. The hints are, are, are really good as well. That way, uh, you don't have to worry. Now, hints can be... Uh, seen in the advancement so as you unlock emeralds more hints for them will unlock and these will kind of give you an idea of where you can find each of these emeralds what area they're in as well so for instance if you have an emerald in one of these one of these three areas you know this is in the second area i believe just because uh, it's made out of most of these blocks um, and you can tell that these ones are in the strider uh, savannah just because of the fact that that's the only place that that uh, symbol represents. I'm getting carried away. This map, I always like to play on the hardest difficulty, so I believe I played on hard mode with the hardest setting enabled, which was basically you die, you lose your stuff. The gimmick for this map is really interesting. I, I definitely enjoy playing in the nether, but... The burnout mechanic was a little bit difficult to get used to. It was definitely rage inducing. I found myself yelling at the computer a couple of times, which I rarely do, and I ended up quitting the game a few times uh, just out of rage. What I ended up doing was I had, and I'm in a, a bunch of backup sets here just in case. Oh, one final thing for just kind of the general viewers. Do I have auto jump turned on? Yeah, I do. Let me go ahead and turn that off here. One thing I want to say is that the completionist goal is pretty good as well. Um, I won't spoil it for you guys. Uh, pretty much this entire next section is spoilers. I do highly recommend the map. Um, and I'll kind of get into my review here now. So this section is more so for the developers and whatnot. I kind of want to go through area by area and provide my thoughts on it uh, as well as... Oh, great. Let me go ahead and go to creative mode here. Uh, as well as offer feedback about things. The other big mechanic for this map, I guess, if you're still watching and you're just a regular old uh, viewer and you're not really interested in my thoughts on the finer aspects of this map, um, is that for each area, there's a custom texture pack and oftentimes there's even custom soundtracks. Now, I really did like the custom music in this game. It did make me feel very, very, very uncomfortable and uneasy in many places which I think was the feel the map was going for, so I'm not going to fault that. Um, 
it's definitely different than anything else I've experienced in the past. Because I don't play horror games or thrillers or anything like that, but this definitely was an eerie feel. The first area here, I definitely enjoyed the start to it. You know, just a couple of trees here and there. I was very worried uh, if I'd have enough resources. I believe I pillared over here pretty early on. And this is where I think one of the things that could have been done a little bit better was, was I didn't know that this, the, that boss mobs spawned inside of these things and that you needed to kill those boss mobs in order to obtain the wall. I found that on later on in that area up there, but I think that some sort of instruction pretty early on the map would have been useful, maybe in some sort of book. Maybe there was and I just missed it. I can't remember. I do like other maps where you can just get the books for free at the start here, just so that way you can change the difficulty or you can kind of revisit the map rules because in this, I didn't realize that this was the end of the first area and that I needed to just come over here, grab the wool from these baddies. Uh, another thing I kind of liked was the shulker, shulker mechanic in this map. In CTMs, it's kind of hard to balance shulkers. In a lot of them, they come too few too late. Um, in a lot of them, you just get way, 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 way too many at the end of the day. Um, in this one, you basically get a shulker for every unique music disc you have. There's custom villagers later on in this map. Um, the You can also get multiple of those custom villagers, so you can use the same disc more than once. I felt it was pretty balanced overall. One criticism I have of this map, and this is of most untold stories map, is that the custom trade villagers are in a specific location. And so you always have to travel back to that location in order to get those items or those special trades. I don't like that. I don't think that's the way it should be. The way I think it should be is that when you get to a custom villager, it has that custom villager transferable to your main base or to the monument. That way you have everything in one place and you don't have to go scattering around the map for other stuff. This map was already very grindy as is, and I felt like that's just a quality of life thing that most maps should have nowadays. Um, and just so for your information, I I have played a lot of CTM maps. I've enjoyed a, a ton of them. Untold Stories is one of my more favorite series. So I, I like the texture packs in most of these areas as well. Uh, we'll go over kind of my thoughts on each of them individually, but I definitely did like that uh, that gimmick. I think I'm trying to think if there's any other general things I kind of wanted to cover before diving into each individual area. All right, I think we should get started. So when I start out this map, and I, I probably will stream if I do CTMs in the future, just so that way um, you know people can see in more detail. Um, I created this chest out of some of the extra wood I obtained, and I basically use this as my little base. Now, I struggled at first because uh, I didn't realize, oh, you can get this as uh, wood. And I went throughout this entire area with pretty much just wooden tools because I didn't know what blackstone looked like and I didn't know you could use it to craft tools. One of these houses had a crafting recipe above it that I realized, oh, I can use blackstone to make tools. But I couldn't really find blackstone. Um, you know, it's in most of these little caverns right down here, like right down here. I never got, I never explored this place right here. Um, Oh, there isn't any in here, actually. But, uh, yeah, I, I did struggle to find Blackstone in this first area, which isn't a big deal. It's not the end of the world. Um, let's see here. Any particular thoughts? One of the things I loved about this map were these spawners. Oh, I love them so, so much. I like the idea of instead of having just a couple of custom items that when you die, you lose them forever, you can basically kind of grind these spawners. Uh, now, obviously, there's that trade-off. You have to spend some of that time to get those items, but at the same time, those items become renewable instead of just being gone forever once you die. I love that, especially with the custom charms in this map. I absolutely love it. I did feel like the charms, some of their trade-offs weren't that great. I really wish that more of the charms were shields, if that makes sense. I didn't use any of the custom shields in this map, but you give up a lot by using a charm instead of a shield. I really just wish that charms, instead of just giving you a flat buff, would be a shield with some extra buffs. That's just my opinion, but it makes things a lot more 
you get really frustrated using the charms when you fight against skeletons and other mobs. I love using them because I like experimenting with custom items and it's just kind of unique to have those extra special abilities such as strength and whatnot. All right, so I'm kind of going off here. Um, I found pretty much all the emeralds in this area without any issue. I ended up mining up a lot of this tree for wood. I liked this one, it was pretty fun. Um, I followed along the path in this area because I figured that that was leading me to where I needed to go. I did end up up here and then left, and then I ended up coming back later, um, and I ended up killing one of these mobs and then getting the wool, which was, then I realized, oh, you're supposed to kill these things to get the wool. And there's a distinction between, there's, I, I think it would be nice if there was a bigger distinction between the ones for the wool and the ones for not. I guess you have the, never mind, I guess you have the beacon in here, so that's not a problem. Never mind, I said. Uh, but right off the bat, it was difficult for me to know, like, how do I actually get these? Uh, the texture pack in this area was pretty good uh, overall. Uh, the, let's see, I'm talking about the, the second area here. I like how the torches were, like, a little bit redder, and it really felt like Blood on Leaves, which is the area of the name. I love how when you enter and leave the area, it has this text that pops up. I love that. I love that. Fantastic. If you can add that for every other map you guys do, that would be perfect. That would be absolutely stellar. So anyways, I was very happy about that. Next area. So we get to the monument over here. Now, this gets to one of my main struggles with this map, which is food. I made a little base up here, kind of preparing for every different thing that I would get in the future. I... At the beginning of the map, you really only have melons and carrots, which are a pathetic food source. I would find myself, I had to make a skeleton grinder over here in order to grind the bones to make the food to eat and survive. Um, I wish there were some better food sources. I understand the nuance of it being difficult because it's in the nether, but the problem is that food takes forever to grow and the map never gave you potatoes, which are a good food source. Um, like, I'm okay with eating carrots for, like, the first area or two. Like, okay, I get that. But once you move on to the third, fourth, fifth areas, you know, the food progression needs to be better. You need to have, you know, maybe melons in the first area, then carrots, then maybe get access to wheat, and then you get potatoes, and then you start being able to access cooked food not long after that. Um, although I did like being able to grind for cooked food, like we'll talk about later. But food was a pain in this map. I absolutely despised not being able to have some better food. Uh, it was a life changer when I finally did. The reason it's difficult is that you'll get low on health and then you'll just have to like either leave the area to grab more food or sit there regenerating forever. And it's just a bore. But anyways, just kind of a little rant on that. The food situation in this map wasn't ideal. I did make my own base. I felt it would be better than having to go all the way back here every time. Um, I think that was the right choice. Farming wood and other resources in this area was interesting. I didn't realize there was iron in here. That would have really helped me out if I knew that. But the problem was that these spawners were very deadly. I felt, I think that the difficulty of the mobs in here could have been turned down a little bit. Because if you came, come inside of these trees, oh. Maybe it's just a couple of trees that you can get inside of then. I felt like I couldn't really mine into these trees just because of how deadly it was. Oh, never mind, you can't get inside of here. Just don't have night vision right now. Um, so the trees are a bit difficult, but I did like the main area here. All right, so we have this main monument area, and then you kind of move on to the next area, which is right down here. Now. Ugh. Good, good area. Good, good design and everything. Terrible texture pack. Terrible, terrible, terrible. So I was using doing this on a screen that wasn't quite as bright. Even with this, I'm still struggling to see in some places. Like, you can't really distinguish the difference between um, what is concrete over here and what is just whole, especially when this isn't lit up. Um, so this area. I think this is my least favorite texture pack in the entire map, just because of how difficult it was to see. I ended up dying so many times because of that. It was 
and it was not fun to play through. I'll just put it that way. This was not a fun area to play through. I did really love the charm in this area. This is the first one that I really grinded out. Um, but yeah, so that would be my main feedback. So good area overall for this one. Just terrible texture pack. I think then, what's the next one? I think the next one's over here with, I think it's called Warp Cliff Ruins. Warp Cliff Ruins was difficult um, in a cup for a couple of reasons, but it was good. This was another great area. I liked all of the uh, the little vines here. I actually ended up making a farm over at my base just so that way I could have those to clutch with. You know, instead of water bucket to clutch, you can just use these vines. Um, another frustration I had early on this map was I couldn't find any anvils. I did, didn't know where the anvils were, and I don't know if there are any early in the map, but you're given a lot of books that you could put on items. And so that was just very frustrating is I had all these enchanted books that I couldn't put enchantments on because I didn't have access to an anvil. So I really wish that could change in the future, maybe add some more anvils in the monument area, um, just so that way players can actually use those enchanted books earlier on instead of stockpiling them and not using any of the lower level enchantment books later on. Um, the feel of this area is pretty good. I like the particles, I like the texture pack. Um, it's definitely better than not having a texture pack. Um, and like little Enderman screeches in the background were pretty fun as well. Just having that little really added to the atmosphere here. I did struggle to find uh, a couple of the emeralds in this area, but I found them all in the end. I usually like completing areas to the completely, so it, that was pretty fun. Um, okay, we have the little guy up here. I think there were too many mobs in this section. This section right here, I felt like there were too many mobs in this area. I couldn't find all the spawners. I, there's probably some in the trees or something like that, but I just kept getting bombarded with mobs. So I felt that was a little bit overwhelming. I ended up really raging when I died in here because uh, I took out the blaze spawner and then I came over here, I felt like all accomplished. And the creeper just jumped on me and blew me up. And so obviously that destroyed the iron in here. Um, you know, you were supposed to come up here and destroy everything and then go down. Um, a little bit unfair, but also, you know, it kind of teaches you a valuable lesson that in these maps, you guys often drop creepers on players from above. The reason that I didn't like the creepers dropping on my head in this map in particular um, were two reasons. First of all, I didn't have a good uh, source of blast protection early on in the map, so it's not like you can prevent creeper deaths very easily. Um, and second of all, deaths, you lose all your items. So normally in a map, you get blown up by a creeper. It's not the end of the world. You can go pick your items up again. But in this map, if you get blown up by a creeper, that's it. Um, so it's a lot more punishing to die to creepers in this map. I do like the custom death mechanics, though, uh, like where you get tombstones and stuff like that. So maybe just thoughts for the future. I don't think I grinded out any of the little bulbs here. I liked the hanging pathways. I really liked these pathways. So going along these, they did have like a predictable spawning of mobs like at each of these corners, each of these intersections. And I just really liked that. It gave me kind of an expectation of, okay, I gotta do a little battle here, lay it up, destroy the spawners, move on. Um, so I, I felt like these passageways were really well designed. A bit difficult to get to some of them, because some of them you'd have to create your own pathway up and down. I wish there was more of a linear path in this area, but overall it was still really good. Really solid area. I'm trying to remember where you go after this. I think after this you just directly go down here. Now this area... Mmm. Mmm. This has... I think this is my favorite area of the map, honestly. Even though it was... I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit later. Um, the texture pack in this area is by far the best in the map. You just have this sandstorm that's going on. Um, it doesn't impede vision at all. It definitely adds to the atmosphere. It makes it feel great. When I first came down here, I went back here and struggled to fight a lot of these custom piglins over here. I didn't realize there was a bonus emerald over here until I had finished the rest of the area, but the hint was made it pretty obvious it was going to be over here. Um, the house, the mob spawners in these are decently balanced. 
maybe a little bit difficult. One of the things with the spawners in this map is that um, they all have pretty much zero delay, which makes sense because you go, you activate the spawner, you kill the mobs, then you can go destroy the spawner. But at the same time, it doesn't give you any opportunity to kind of come in here and like, I know there's going to be spawners in this house, let me destroy it. And instead, the strategy became, let me go activate all the spawners in the area, then retreat, then to despawn the mobs, and then come back and light stuff up. Um, so it basically kind of discourages uh, rushing in, because you have to go in, go back, defeat mobs, or despawn, and then go back at it. it it's I, I'm not really sure how to fix that or make that better. It's not a bad loop either. Um, I just do kind of like when you can run in, just destroy spawners. Feels good. Uh, but like the houses over here. I like that the desert was kind of barren and you just had these little points here where you would go to and you would just kind of explore it and figure it out. Uh, like you have this little pool over here. You have these little houses on the outskirts of the map. It's just open and feels great and you have things to explore. I love this. I love this. I love this. Um, okay, then you get into the Sphinx. So this is the next section of this area which I really liked and I really hated. So the reason I really like this is the, this maze portion, uh, fantastic. It was difficult, I was limited on torches, so I had to go through that. Um, the custom torch mechanic in this map. So it's a blessing and a curse in a sense. Um, I really didn't like being limited on torches at the start. Eventually you get access to a very easy supply of glowstone and so they're never an issue again. So I felt like the balance in terms of giving the player glowstone was a little bit lopsided because it was like you get nothing and then you get a ton. Um, so torches could have been balanced a little bit better I feel but overall they were pretty good. I'm not gonna, it's not a major complaint from me, from me just a very minor one. And bear in mind that while I am complaining like about a lot of things here this map, the fun I had in it, like vastly outweighs any sort of complaint that I have. This map was made fantastically. The feedback I'm offering is, you know, some of the more major stuff so that way we, you know, you guys might be able to make better maps in the future, but also just because, you know, it's a lot easier to think of the negatives than the positives, <laughs> I guess is what I'm trying to get at. Um, anyway, so I completed this area I got to the boss. Boss was fine. I liked all the gold here. This was the worst section. I'm not sure if you can tell, but there's some explosions here. So the first, I, the first time I got the wool, I had a chest here store with a lot of stuff because you don't want to die because you lose your stuff. So I went ahead and grabbed all my stuff. I was coming up and I was like, okay, here we go. It's it's the best. We're going to go home. And then a creeper just falls on my head and blows up and I lose everything. I don't have any time to react. I don't have any time to do anything. A creeper just falls on my head, blows up, and it's over. I think there was, I can't remember if there was a creeper spawner up here or not. If there was, that's terrible. If there wasn't, these kinds of staircases aren't great because if a creeper jumps and falls on your head, it's all over. There's nothing you can do as a player to prevent that. And you lose all your stuff in this map. So like if, if this was, if the, if the death penalty was, oh, you dropped your items, I would have been like, okay, who cares? I'm just gonna go back, I'm gonna grab them. It's annoying, but it works. But because of the difficulty with this map, this staircase was so deadly. I came up here, I think two or three times and the same thing happened to me every single time. It's just a creeper would fall on my head, I'd get blown up and I'd lose all my stuff. And so I, th that was just very annoying. It got to the point where I just lit everything up here so much just to make sure that nothing could spawn. Um, so besides this staircase, which I, and I lost so much doing this too, because I came down here the second time with an iron pickaxe, I mined all the gold in here, and then I went up and I died again. And then I came down here a third time, grabbed it, started going up, I died again. So I died three, I think three or four times with the wool. Terrible experience, but still really great area overall. Um, so besides that section, this area was great. 
good emeralds in this area too. I like the little treasure hunt. I didn't figure out exactly how to look for the X on the map for the treasure hunt, but it worked. All right, next area. So now we get on to the, I can't remember, what, let's see what this area is named. My feelings on the texture pack for this area is mixed. Um, and you can't really see it right now, but when you get into dark areas, especially like in these caves, you can't see anything, it's pitch black. So it's a very similar problem to the third area in this map, which is that you just really can't see anything, um, especially on computers that might not be as bright. But when you're not underground, this looks great. I mean, it's dark, so you can't see. You can see far, but you can't see super far. Um, I like the little particles. It definitely feels like a basalt. Um, oh, I didn't even realize there's a little secret in here. There's a lot of stuff I didn't find on the map. I kind of wish I had more time to explore it more. And if I stream some of these maps in the future, I definitely will take the time to explore these in a bit more detail. I liked this uh, grinder over here. I grinded this a lot. The mending pants, I love like low level mending items. Um, Cause then you can just use it indefinitely, but it does have that trade off of being weaker. And I'll always go for the weaker item with infinite durability. Cause one of the problems is in CTM maps, you have to go home when your armor gets too low, you run out of food and resources, or you don't have any more space in your inventory. And eliminating either of those three can make your life a whole lot easier. So shulkers help with one of those. Having better or higher durable armor helps with the other. One thing that I really didn't like about this map was that all the custom items were unrepairable. And I don't think that was a good design choice. Um, I get that you can grind some of them, but when you grind a lot of these, they have very little durability. So you should be able to repair them. You should be able to combine them. You shouldn't be limited with custom items. Um, I feel like it really stagnates their potential and reduces the amount that players use it at the end of the day. So please, in the future, if I could, my top two things, my top two things would be for the custom villagers, have them transported to the monument and then make custom items renewable. In other words, not renewable, uh, repairable. I think that was something that was tried out in this map. I don't remember if that's with previous uh, Untold Stories maps, but big complaint there. So that's one of the bigger complaints. Um, yeah, this area is where you get iron, so that's great. I didn't really get to experience the final boss because they kind of mine down from above. I didn't experience a lot of these bosses in a legitimate way. I cheesed most of them, which I think is fine for most of these bosses. I did fight a couple of them, but when you risk all your stuff dying, you gotta be careful. So the next area that I did, it's not the right area, it's not the right order, was this one right here, Crystal Blossom. Um, and I loved it because I could, I came down here and I harvested this entire pillar for torches, which is great. Um, and then I realized that you could also craft these glowstone blocks into glowstone powder as well, because one of these houses taught you that. And that was another, uh, that was a good mechanic because then you can kind of compress, if that makes sense. But you have to have either fortune or self touch, so that's the downside. Um, good spawner right here. Just trying to go throughout the islands to kind of remember. I love this area um, for the custom creepers. I love them. They're such a cool concept. Uh, and I really wish that there were more areas like that where you kind of have custom uh, mechanics or like some sort of custom potion effect. I think maybe the only thing I would have done differently is maybe give those players those effects just within this region. So if they're within this region, give them the jump boost and the uh, the slow falling. Maybe the creepers can add like speed to you and make the jump boost higher and the levit and the slow falling better. Um, I would give it to players from the onset um, because it is difficult to kind of track those down as well as get to these little things up here. But even if that was, you know, like. Regardless of that, this area is still fantastic. This is one of my top areas for sure. Um, 
I just absolutely loved it. The Trident guys were a little bit difficult, but not as difficult as in previous maps. I'm glad that I had some decent armor to protect against them. Um, the particles in this area, the sounds in this area are spot on. The only real complaint I'm going to give to this area is right here. When I first start, when I climbed up here and I'm trying to loot the houses, the skeletons are constantly spawning, and I think I dived to them several times because of that. Uh, if you're going to have a renewables spawner, put it somewhere where there's not a bunch of places of interest. I think you even need to get to one of these for, um, oh, I didn't even get this crossbow. I wonder what this is. Um, that's actually really great. That's really great. I wish I got that in, uh, I wish I got that in the map. Um, Anyway, so your renewable spawners should probably be separate from any place of interest with chests or emerald items. Maybe it was this house. In one of these houses, there's a chest full of maps that you need to use. I think it is over here. I thought I could have sworn it was right here. So I'm wrong. Anyways, so that's my only complaint for this. I love the boss fight here uh, because of the custom item that basically changed the way I played in this map which was a uh, light bringer or the light sorry my bad which is an amazing trident that has mending so you don't have to worry about replacing it um and it lights up where you shoot i think that's a fantastic concept and i think that concept should be carried throughout all maps i think that there should be an item where you can light up things from a distance i can't tell you how many times i've been in a ctm map and i'm like i want to go in there but it should be lit up a little bit like, if I can just light up a little bit from this place, I'd be willing to make a sacrifice if only I could light it up. And the sacrifice, obviously, with the light is you've got to spend the time to throw it. If you miss, it's going to take a long time to come back. And, or sorry, you have to you have to shoot it. It's going to take a long time to come back. If you miss, you have to go replace the trident. Um, yeah, so I think, I think those trade-offs are good in the end. I think that's good for having... Especially, you know, in a map with a lot of void here where you can just accidentally miss the trident. I can't tell you how many tridents I miss. It's a lot. Uh, I love that mechanic. I want to see the light in future maps. I really, really like that item. That was my favorite item in this map. The other item I used a lot was Hive of Storms. I like that with the custom items, they have custom particles and sometimes custom sounds as well. I didn't like the custom sounds of the Hive of Storms quite as much. Um... But I did like those custom particles. So I thought that was pretty cool. I, I wonder how much um, it uses up map memory and whatnot. I came to this area next. I entered it from behind, which gave me some issues. The texture pack here is pretty cool. The dark areas are a bit too dark, but it's pretty cool. I never went above the clouds. I wanted to, but I didn't. I believe there are some secret things up here that I checked out spectator mode after I was done. Yeah, like this chest right here. Oh yeah, I grabbed it. I grabbed it in spectator mode after I was done with the map. Um, so the custom gimmick in this area is these gravel paths, and if a creeper blows up on them, they all fall. I didn't like that element of it, honestly. I don't like the gravel pathways, like, like a gimmick. And the reasoning for that is that when I was trying to place these lights, obviously the gravel could fall. Um, and you always feel uneasy, which is not necessarily bad, but it's not in a healthy way, if that makes sense. I'm trying to figure out kind of like what my main, what my main qualm with this is. I'm okay with having like gravel or snow pit traps. You need to be able to, so you need to be able to see it coming and it can't, you should always be able to kind of get from point A to point B without having to make a ton of extra paths. And here, as those creepers are blowing up, you're gonna to have to make more paths and it's not gonna feel good because there could be spawners on the other side. Yeah, so that's a major problem. Overall, this area was still good. It's not my favorite area. Um, it's, this one's probably about middle of the pack in terms of quality, just because like this is a major downside, the gravel. I love this arena though. This arena was fantastic going throughout the different levels, lighting them up. I love this. I love this. Um, for those of you that haven't played the map, um, sea lanterns are placed when you throw with the light. So that's why you're going to see a lot of sea lanterns in all of these areas from here on out and not so much torches. 
Uh, I didn't. Yeah, so I approached the area from that side, never came to this island. I did end up approaching it from this side eventually because I realized, oh, this is the shorter path here. Although I didn't um, complete everything. I didn't realize there was a custom shovel up here. I do like how the, so there were some custom items, like in item frames here, in invisible item frames. I do think that's pretty cool. But it does make it difficult to see them. I think maybe what I would have done differently was add like particles. Like just a couple of little par faint particles coming out of the item frames. So that way you know that there's something there. Uh, instead of skipping over it. Oh, okay. Um, moving on. I lied. This is actually my favorite area. <laughs> this is by far my favorite area, Strider Safari. I love this area. This was so fun. I don't know why I liked it, but it's just something about riding around on the Striders was satisfying. I kind of wish there were more warp fungus on a stick. I had to replenish this chest after a while. If there's any area like this in the future, maybe they should come with a strider or you could stack fungus on a stick. And that's not like a big deal for players to be able to access uh, a stacked item um, like that. So long as they know, hey, I need to just take one. Or maybe even just like an auto replenishing stand that when you pick up the item there, it and it'll replenish so long as you're not within a certain number of blocks and there's not an item there, if that makes sense. Which isn't too hard to program it, and that's just a couple of command blocks. And they don't need to be running all the time. Uh, I love this area. I ended up farming for the shellstone or whatever these guys drop in the end. I didn't really explore this mountain too, too much. Um, custom villager in here, I forget what he trades. I just love Strider Safari. Uh, I believe I explored over this way first before completing the area. I ended up getting um, some of the diamonds down here. I basically brought a strider with me, and since I saw there were diamonds down here, I came down and grabbed those. This was before realizing there's a billion other diamonds in this area. Um, the progression was a little bit wonky in terms of diamonds. I And I'll explain that kind of... Yeah, how do I... I wish there were more diamonds in this area over here. I don't know what this one's called, but this area should have had more diamonds based off how easy they were to get over here. Anyways, so you get to this section. I farmed this guy a lot as well. I really liked his drops. The bow was very handy. Um, the wool was good. Uh, yeah, I just I just really like this area. Fantastic area. I, I really don't have any qualms with this area whatsoever at Strata Safari. Because of the fact that you lose all your items when you die, it's not like... You're not constantly tense moving over the lava. And I like that the striders were invincible as well. I, I'm pretty sure they were invincible. So you didn't have to worry about, you know, falling off of them. After this area, I went to the wrong area next. I actually went to this final area, which I didn't realize was the final area. Um, when I got into the Temple of the Sun, uh, I saw this and realized oh, this is the final area. But I had already gathered a bunch of the diamonds. And so I just went ahead and completed this area. I think that in the future, I'm probably going to skip ahead in CTMs to complete later areas earlier on because getting those extra resources early can be very helpful, but I'm just commentating on that. Um, this area, I loved it. It's gorgeous. It was a little bit difficult at times. Now, a couple problems I had with this area, it, these are just minor problems, was uh, I saw there was like a little entrance down here, so I went throughout the entire place trying to find like a way to get in here. Eventually I found this in here and made my way down and around, came into here. Now after lighting up this place and getting in here, I went down and there was no boss. So I was very confused. And then I went all the way up and I couldn't find anything up here. And so then I kind of finished up most of this area, and then I finally explored this section over here to realize this was the final boss. Honestly, I, I don't feel like this final boss was all that fantastic. Um, the reason being is that you kind of just stand back over here and shoot him to death. Like, that's all you do. Like, I like the custom moves and everything like that, but... It should either be in an arena you can't escape, so that way there's some stakes, 
or... You know, like, I, I didn't feel like I could go in and fight him manually, I guess was, was just the main thing I, I'm trying to get at here. Because I felt like I had to snipe him because he would rain down these explosive bullets that just completely obliterated my health, even, I think, with diamond armor. So, I didn't realize there were custom items up here. I like that the bookshelves in this map weren't uh, difficult to obtain. Oh, is there something in this pillar? Oh, no, just like... Um, enchanting. I'm trying to remember if enchanting was discovered in a decent time. I think it was a while before I finally got enchanting. I think it was when I got diamonds that I got enchanting. Yeah, so pretty far into the map. Part of me wishes that I had enchanting earlier. I played a Pantheon map recently where uh, you got enchanting earlier on, but the trade-off was that in order to get books, you had to pay a steep price in terms of a custom resource. And that was a pretty good trade-off, I'd say. Because you got a chance earlier on, but you couldn't get good in chance till later in the map. Alright, so anyway, so final area, fantastic. Not really any big qualms with it, just the kind of little issue of why well, I couldn't figure out where the boss there was. Um, this spawner was pretty cool, I didn't use it that much though. I also end up dying to the charged creepers in one of these, even though trying to be super cautious. I'm trying to remember where it was. One of these towers. I think it's this tower over here. No? Which tower is it? Oh, it's this one right here. Yeah, I doubt the charge creepers in here. I don't really feel like charged creepers are. I felt like the charge creepers in this map were a little bit too powerful. You can assign custom explosive values to creepers. Um, so with making custom creepers, it's not hard to balance them to be more or less deadly. Let me just put it that way. Uh, after that area, I went and completed this area. Obviously, I didn't really struggle with getting hit because they had diamond armor. Um, rock the boat. So rock the boat was like a little below average in terms of quality areas in this map. I didn't really like the texture pack because it limited how far you could see. And also I couldn't tell what areas were lit up or not unless I was very, very close. Um, I knew this ship was explosive, so I never went on to it. Um, Trying to think of what else happened here. I liked the idea of all the like little graves here, and so I kind of expected what was going to come next. I could just kind of come in here, light it up, destroy the the spawners, and move on to the next graveyard. I really liked that, and like the little sunken ships here and there. I really struggled to find the emerald that was called Rock the Boat, or something like that. I looked at on this boat forever because I could I, I knew it had to be here, but it wasn't here in the end. And then I think I looked on this one over here, ended up down here, and there were way too many zombies forming me. Uh, like way too many zombies forming me. Eventually, I think I found it. It's in like one of the other ships over here. I think it's this one. This one, right? Is it this one? I don't remember where it's at, but I do remember it's in one of these ships, so... Yeah, yeah, it's here. Okay. I didn't complete most of this area, though. Because kind of after getting the the wool over here and the emerald, I, I was just kind of trying to beat the map at that at this point. Um, it was interesting, because if you looked through the glass, the filter doesn't apply, so you could see a long ways, even though being with that filter. Once again, good filter is just the visibility was, I think, too limited and it was too hard to tell dark from sunlight. Um, then we have the last area that I explored, which was Hexaflame Castle. Um, and I did struggle, I think, most in this section right here. But that's because I entered it from the bottom over here, I think. And so creepers just kept spawning. I think it would have been a lot easier if I had entered it from the top right here. So that's probably my fault. But overall, Hexaflame Castle was pretty fun. A lot of mazes, a lot of things to explore. Uh, took me a while to find everything. I figured that it was the on the house one was up here after realizing it wasn't down here. I still like this little bonus area. I wish that it had a little bit more in it, but it was pretty good overall. I, I like little bonus areas like this where you just find like these little hidden secrets. Mm, I love them. It, it just tingle your senses. Like having one of those in each area. One or two of those in each area is great. And this one was not that hard to find. Um, 
because they realized, oh, you have to go to where the spiders are. And they, I, they're not, the wall obviously wasn't in, I can't remember which one it was. In one of these, in one of these areas, there's another place with a lot of spiders. Is it over here? Right down here, yeah. What well, it obviously wasn't in here. It just wasn't. Um, it was interesting having to climb all the way up here for the emerald. I like the little challenge over here. Yeah, good area. Good area. Another good area. The the filter was a little bit off. Uh, I know it's a lot easier to see right now. I think the main issue I had with the custom filters was just the lighting. I don't play with gamma, so it's difficult to see. And this map basically told you not to use dynamic lighting, so I couldn't use dynamic lighting either, like holding a torch in my hand or anything like that. I don't know why this map discouraged you from using dynamic lighting. I don't know if that's just a recommendation from a gameplay perspective or if that actually messes with something with the pack. But anyways. Well, the texture pack in this area is pretty fire too. The real orange lava and like the little heat. You can see the background simmering. Ah, so I've been kind of going off and off about this. So map overall, fantastic. I can't wait for the next one. The main things I, I hope change would be in the future would be maybe make the difficulty gimmicks a bit different. But obviously, you know, they're gonna switch them up in every map. Make sure the villagers come here instead of staying all throughout the map. The food balance in this map was off, but I don't know if there's going to be any more nether maps and untold stories in the future. I guess I've, I guess I've, uh, I've offered all the feedback that I can at this point. There's other little things here and there, other experiences with my gameplay. Overall, it was a very fun experience. The frustrations were mostly just with the pack and you know, having to uh, deal with low level food. Very grindy, very grindy, but good at the end of the day. Oh, I love the, the animation for the wool as well. Can you keep that? Can you keep that mechanic in the animation for the wool? I like, I love that. Custom music, good. All right. Well, that is going to be all for me for now. Once again, fantastic map. Kudos to you developers. I love it. Um, if you have Patreon, I'd give on Patreon. <laughs> I can't wait to play the next map. Um, until next time, don't forget to contribute and make the most of your day.